Yo guys, I'm Aurelius and I'm back here on another new video. Today I'm going to explain how I mix and master the track I Better Enough out of Musical Freedom and if you didn't watch the previous video where I explained how I made it, please make sure to check it out. So let's dive into the project. Okay, actually this project looks a bit of a mess like the previous one but in this case I have the stems. I'm used to export stems because of course it's real better I can see the waveform of my instruments. I always export the stems for this like the kick and sub bass. As you can see uh, the, there's the kick this is the sub bass and actually there's also an extra side chain as you can see there. And basically I always start my mix from the kick and sub bass because I think that they, they are main elements of uh, an edm truck. And of course I always start from these elements. As you can see from the stems, from the waveforms, I can understand and I can see that the kick is too long, there's a long tail that clashed with the sub bass and this is not actually really good. Even if I put a side chain in the previous project but but as you can see, this is not good. So what I did here, I added uh, an extra side chain to the sub bass with this automation, just to make sure that um, to give more room, to give more space to, to the kick. So in this case, they sound really good. As you can see here from the, the mixer channel, this is the kick, this is the sub bass. I didn't add any pro extra processing because I thought that they already sound really good, so I didn't add any other plugins. But um, I think that the main um, goal when you need to mix the kick and sub bass is always to check, uh, or I mean to find the right balance between the kick and sub bass in terms of volume, of course. And as you can see here, the kick here is around minus six decibels and sub bass around minus nine. So it means that the balance in terms of volumes is around three decibels. So it means that the kick um, needs to be louder um, compared with the sub bass, at least of three decibels, but of course it could be even two or maybe four decibels. So it's just a reference as a value. But of course, as I said, it can, can change in every truck. And of course I put them in mono because the kick and sub bass need to be put in mono. And now let's go to the top bass. Now these are the top basses as we saw in the previous video. Uh, we have four top bases and what I've done here in the mixing project, I actually didn't add any other plugin in a single channel, uh, maybe only any EQ, but I uh, put all of them into a um, bus uh, mixer channel and I processed them together. And as you can see, I had these dynamics by Ozone 8. And what this plugin does, it actually um it's just like a uh, compression basically i'm compressing for every band as you can see here in a different way but for the whole for all this basses so in this case i can i can get like a more glued bass so it sounds like more a, a one bass instead of sounding like four basses and that's the reason why i added this dynamics then there's the saturn so I can boost the high frequencies of the stop bass since I don't have leads so I can give more room in the highs for the basses. And then I added this plugin, this EQ uh, with a low cut. And of course, remember to use linear phase in this case just to avoid any phase issues. Then we have all of this. So the kick, sub bass and all the other basses so in this case, top bases. I put all of them into another bus channel called low hand. And what I did here is actually I used the glue compression, in this case, the glue plugin to compress all together, uh, just like to get something like more glued. Uh, in this case, uh, I have a parallel compression, what is called parallel compression. And basically it's a compression that is uh, mixing the dry signal uh, with the wet signal compressed. And usually the parallel compression is used in the basses or also in the drums with a really hard compression 
and that's the reason why we don't use 100% uh, wet the snob of course we use just like 50% or even 60% just depends from how it sounds and in this case actually this is not really hard compression but yeah I mean but it just sounded really cool with these settings of course be sure to not to copy these settings because they can change every time so for every single stem could be different so an every track is different of course so so don't copy them maybe the only settings i would copy probably are the attack and release because the attack is basically always slow and a really fast release in this case just to not to uh, compress also the transients in this case um actually even for the drums so yeah about the drums as you can see i'm always used to split the drop drums the break drums because i always process them in a different way and as you can see nothing special is going on here maybe a couple of low cuts in the in some drop drums but i put them as well into one drop drums boss and what i did here i actually used this um transient shaper and this plugin allows me basically to boost the transients of the drums or also to attenuate them but in this case i boosted them in the really highs in this top band uh, around 5 key to 20 key and in this also in this one mid band from 300 hertz to 5 key hertz and in the low hand i didn't touch anything because i i, I think that they sound natural normal so i left as it was and then we have also uh, add the glue compression as well this time is a really it's not really hard but i mean it's maybe hard compression and as you can see always slow attack and fast release but um in this case it's completely compressed so we don't have any um any mixing between dry signal and wet signal of of the drums about the vocal i didn't add a lot of things but i remember that in the drop vocal it sounded um kind of weird in the low end in fact i didn't need the low end in the drop vocal so what i've done here a low cut to remove the low end and also here but i removed also some annoying frequencies but yeah nothing special uh, for example is and also here does the main vocal with all these plugins but only for automation so no mixing purposes and yeah, basically I put all of them into the bus, but not other processing on it. For the piano in the drop, in the second part of the drop, as always low cut and another OTT. I remember I maybe used in the first project where I produced the truck, uh, another OTT I had a deal, but nothing special. Then for the Atmos, I'm used to always cut the low and the high hand because I think that the atmospheres need to be in the background and usually when I have something background, I don't want the really high hand or the low end of an instrument and in this case all these um, atmospheres basically are more in stereo are with more reverb for example and of course as you can see this is a normal uh, EQ for an atmospheres, no low hand, uh, no high hand, just some sound in the middle, but just for the background. I think that the most important thing in a mixing project is always to find the right balance between all the stems in terms of volume, because of course mixing uh, the vocal with the bass, with the kick, with the sub bass, with atmospheres, um, it's not really hard uh, in terms of processing, but it's harder to uh, control them in terms of volume because sometimes like the vocal could be uh, too loud or maybe the kick sometimes is like too, too weak. And that's the reason why I always export in stamps and then I just see with a waveform and also because I can just uh, rename all of them or maybe just changing the color so I can know that if I want to change something in particular uh, I know what to what knob to touch something I do quite a lot and 
I think it's quite common in the music production projects or I mean in the EDM probably is um, this three automations uh, one is for the for cutting the low end before the drop hits then we have the master in the master of course stereo separation just to put in mono more to build up and then this endless smile always put in master um, just for the reverb for this low cut I actually added this sort of filter that cut low hand just before the drop hits and this the reason why I did this um, it's just because um, doing this automation the listener will just have the perception that the drop hits harder but actually it isn't that's just because i removed the the low end the power of the build up the same reason actually also for this automation uh, i just automated this knob this one and that's for the stereo separation so i put mono uh the build up just to get the same um uh, perception of uh, of the drop so the listener feels like it's wider and uh, you know more opened but actually that's only the automation behind that put all in mono and then all normal and also this um, sort of uh, automation of the reverb with made with handle smile just to reduce a bit the volume and just adding some reverb before the drop hits so the drop appears like more powerful but actually it's all about these automations let's switch the project and let's go in the mastering project okay we're in the mastering project now and as you can see i'm always used to do different two different projects for the mixing and the mastering because for the same reason basically of the mixing with the stamps but here for the mastering so i can see like the waveform of my uh for the whole track basically and yeah i can just see if the drop for example is too too loud compared with the break in this case is pretty cool so i didn't need to to work around the volume of course so let's start to explain how i mastered it the first plugin, the master chain, is the Fruity Balance, as you can see. And basically, I added it for two reasons this time. The first one, just to do this curve at the beginning and at the end of the track, just to avoid any click or pop when I export then the master track. And also for this reason, just to reduce the, the volume of the build up. For the same reason, basically, I had uh, those three automations in the mixing project just to get a perception that the drop is uh, louder. Then the first plugin I used here is the Pro Q3 uh, with a low cut and high cut. As always, I always do that. And also a side low cut to remove all the stereo frequencies below 121. And of course, the linear phase enabled just to avoid any phase issues. Uh, especially in the mastering year so it's really important then there's this plugin i think it's one of the best plugins out there i always use it in my master chain and basically what it does it um it, it's an equalizer but it can equalize uh the stereo section in a different way from the mono section in fact here you can see that there are two different type of equalizations and here we have a low cut side low cut where i cut all the stereo frequencies below 130 hertz then as uh eqs i always use this one basically this one for boosting the highs around 10 key hertz of course and just to uh, yeah to change something around in the medium uh, band so high medium frequencies and low medium frequencies uh, but here I'm not used to um, to use this uh, low hand knob because I do that on this other plugin this is another cue and I think that this is the best EQ you can use in the master for the low end and the high end in fact here I boosted around 12 um, kHz and here the low end around 60 Hertz and also a good tip uh, for this uh, plugin, of course, is 
this thing, this weird thing that I'm boosting and attenuating at the same time. And basically you can get a better result rather than only using the boost knob. So boosting only the low or the high hand. Just use them together and you can get a really better result. And just let's see the difference with and without these two EQs. As you can see, it sounds like clearer now and like with a warmer low hand, but also really crispy high hand. So these two EQs are perfect for my master chain. Then we have the major. I think you know how a major works, but basically I'm boosting the stereo frequencies around these three bands. And on this one, I'm putting everything in mono. So everything below 141 Hertz is in mono. And then we have this glue compression. I think I used a preset of the glue called the glue 2. Yeah, exactly. And basically it's um, parallel compression. So it's actually a softer compression, but uh, it's parallel because the dry signal is mixed with the wet signal. And then I used a slow hat tech, auto release and a really soft ratio. So it's really soft compression, as you can see also here for the the threshold and then I use this limiter because I think it's one of the best limiter out there and I always use it for my master and since I used to export a really um, quite mixed truck I'm used to uh, boost a lot in the with the invisible limiter I can do that of course because the limiter allow me to boost like 9 decibels and the track doesn't sound distorted. Then as, as you can see I added also the span which is a spectrum analyzer so it doesn't affect the sound. Also this one is a meter so it doesn't affect the sound uh, as well. And basically I use them just to check the sum values for example in the drop. For example, here with the span, I can check this value in the low hand. So if the low hand sounds always around minus 30 decibels, it means that I have a really cool loudness for my low end. If of course the low end is too loud and it's like around here, around minus 24 decibels or also around minus 25 or even 26, it means that the loudness um, is too much so the low end is too loud or even if it's around uh, I mean minus uh, 33 35 uh, maybe it's too weak so it's always something good to check uh, my master into the spectrum analyzer so I can just understand the values of my master then we have the Ulin loudness meter 2 I use the free version because I just need this one I don't need the pro version, so I just need to check these values that basically it's the loops integrated and the short term. And then I use also to control and to check the true peak max, just to check that it does go over zero decibel. Okay guys, that's how I mastered I Bad Enough. You can check the track out on Musical Freedom just clicking the link in the description. I hope you learned something new from it. If you have any other questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or leave a comment here down below. Please subscribe to the channel and see you soon in the next video.